No? Yeah. Okay. Um, hello everybody and welcome to uh, my panel, just um, backgrounds. I want to talk about all sorts of backgrounds, how to do them and, and stuff, but mainly uh, focus on how to draw backgrounds in manga. So, um, yeah, welcome. I hope you didn't find it interesting. <laughs> more and demonstrating less, not like uh, the wonderful Lulu was doing earlier, I won't have that much impressive stuff to show, but hopefully uh, it'll be useful to some of you. So let me just ask, um, how many of you have tried to draw their own manga, or, yeah, <laughs> that's very good, and how many of you find the backgrounds to be really difficult? <laughs> that's why you're here, right? Okay, so I'm... Um, yeah, I, I have the same problem, obviously. I've been doing this for many years. Thank you, thank you. Um, and um, I always wondered, how do these manga car get, you know, these amazing backgrounds? They look like photographs, but they're inked, and it just looks great. And um, so I did a lot of research to find out all sorts of methods that people use, and it turns out there's a lot of tricks involved. Um, obviously, not just tricks, because um, some of it is real hard work. But I thought, you know, I might just uh, let you know. Does any of you actually know, like, do you have any suggestions? How would you draw backgrounds? Do you just use a ruler? Yeah? I would hire an assistant. <laughs> That's very good. That's a very, very good solution. Obviously, in Japan, people do have assistants, which unfortunately we do not have because manga is not that popular, not that well paid here. So it's a bit difficult. <laughs> okay, let me just write down a couple of things. So, um, if you want, you can take notes, I don't know, it's, it's being filmed, so probably all of you can look it up later too, so um, just get right down. So, one of the things that I found out that manga can do is they use photographs, so I'll just write photos as one. Um, another method is uh, 3D programs, right? And the third one is by hand, which is the most difficult one. Yeah, so um, I want to say a couple of things about the photos, but you can't just go on Google and pick a background and then paste it into your manga or your illustration or painting or drawing. That is illegal, so please do not do that. <laughs> because somebody else took the photograph, the copyright belongs to the person who took the photo, so if you want to use photographs and trace them, it has to be a photo that you took yourself. So a lot of times, mangaka um, get a sponsored trip to a place that has surroundings and just settings that they want to use. Um, and they just bring loads of cameras and they just snap photos of everything during a short trip. And then they take them back and then they use them in their manga, in their scenes and in their books. Um, because obviously the rights are their own and so they can use it however they want. Um, sometimes they even just use Photoshop and change it with filters and uh, like the contrast, they change the contrast and then they just actually use the photograph directly instead of, uh, for example, tracing it. Um, Yes, the second one, 3D programs, is also a little bit more difficult. So I'd say photos is probably easiest if you can afford the trip. <laughs> um, 3D programs is something you, you probably should, you know, you probably need to learn a little bit before you can use it. Um, here I have a suggestion for you guys because there is something called SketchUp. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a free, there's a free version of this that you can just download and, and install and what you can do is you can just make like basic shapes and, uh, and build things yourself and use that as sort of a base to then add details for example. Um, I do that a lot for, for rooms for example if I do interiors because if you have a scene in a house or something it has to look the same in, in throughout the whole scene and it's very difficult to get it the same all the time so if you have one 3d model you can use it multiple times you can sort of turn it around and look at it from many angles and you can use that you can take like um, there's like a you can 
make it not, not for print it, but like a screenshot type thing where you can actually get a still from that and use that. So um, again, um, it's important that you, you make it yourself. There are some models, I think, that are free to use for everybody, but it's always better to do something yourself because, again, copyright is, you know, you don't want to steal things from other people. All right, and the third one by hand, well, there's nothing really I can say about that except it's really, really hard work. Um, and usually you start out learning how to use grids, perspective, and things like that, right? So yeah, those are the three, three methods. Um, I'm just going to go through sort of like the, the basics today, so I'm not going to start talking about super complicated things. Um, so um, we're not going to be talking about um, like interiors, that's a bit difficult. So I'm going to start explaining um, some basic things about, for example, landscapes. It's a lot easier to understand, right? So I'm just going to draw a simple example. Oops, let me just find my way here. Where is the pencil? Oh, right here. Let's just get rid of these. I'm not used to this. <laughs> mine. Okay. So, all right. So aside from like all these methods, I'm just going to show you what happens um, when you draw a background. Mm. We'll just take a frame. Oops. Okay, so there's three things when you draw backgrounds, which is the, the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. And all of these three things are very important for when you draw backgrounds in general, because all, you know, everybody wants to draw characters, everybody knows how to draw characters and you find tutorials about characters everywhere but nobody really knows like the rules of, of like backgrounds. So um, usually the very background way in the back is usually the horizon. I'm just going to put some mountains around here maybe. Start very simple. Then let's go some hills here maybe and then I'm just going to add some more hills like here. Okay, this is just the first example. So obviously we've got three different places, right? This one, this, this whole area is the foreground. Then we've got this whole area which is the middle and all of this in the back is the back. And there's many, many ways to create an illusion of space and um, pretty much um, the vast majority of, of non-character art is sort of section off like this um, and there's a couple of rules. So, um, okay. I'm sorry, this comes across like a bit of a lecture, it's like, okay, take notes, students. Um, <laughs> so, um, you got details, um, so with details it's like this, everything that's close is more detailed than everything that's further away. So if you wanted to draw rocks, for example, if you had rocks in here, I'm not going to draw them um, right now, to, but if you had rocks and they're close to the viewer, you would definitely start detailing them, um, you know, with cracks and moss and, you know, things are growing on them and stuff like that, right? And if you have, like, so this would be somewhere in the foreground, maybe right by the viewer, maybe there's a character here, <coughs> and, uh, I don't know, they're holding a rock for some reason, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> then it would be probably very detailed, right? But if you, what, if you thought like, oh, these mountains, you know, I have this whole fantasy story and these mountains are made of crystals and I want to show you that they're made of crystals. If you start drawing crystals over here, like in super detail, it will look really, really, really bad. So don't do that. Um, so the further away, I'm just going to draw like a crystal here. <laughs> so the further away something is, um, the less, the fewer details you will draw. Um, so this would be with, a, with like a magnifying glass or something, right? But, um, but 
don't draw this. <laughs> okay, so um, so let me just well, I have a better example. Look. So this is the same rock. If it's far away, oops. If it's far away, sometimes it's just sort of hinted at. So maybe maybe a tree is a better example. So if you have a tree in the foreground, you would draw, you know, the branches and the leaves and maybe a little bug, like a little ladybird sitting on here, you know. And um, you just draw like really detailed stuff and so this is what it would look like in the foreground. But if you draw um, Let's say this this whole area in the forest or something. If you draw that, it's it's really enough to just have like a blobby sort of thing that hints at trees. Like you can you can just draw the tree trunks and maybe like a little bit of fluff to show that this is trees. You know, so this is enough, and you can definitely see a big difference, right? So here's even the little veiny bits of the of the leaves and here you obviously can't tell every leaf because if you started again you know if you started drawing every single leaf do you know how that will look it'll look really weird right that just looks really dumb so um so that's one of the tricks now um yeah another thing is again to to give this impression of uh depth and distance um Another method is um, colour, right, colour. And, um, yeah, so um, I'm just going to add another layer to show off a little bit of colour. And there's a very simple rule. So you know that red is a warm colour, right, and blue is a cold colour. So generally, <coughs> reds and like warm colours are perceived as being closer and cold colours are perceived as being further away. Um, so let me just write that down. So this one's, oops, let's do this. This one's, oops, not wrong, <laughs> close. <laughs> this one's far. Right? So, um, so yeah, you don't you don't want like bright red mountains or something, unless maybe you know it's a, it's like a scene of a sunset or something, and the sky is red. Obviously, that's a different story. But you know, you sort of want to keep things that are bright and saturated are usually closer. And um, another thing, again, within the color, I'll just add another little note, which is saturation. Which is this whole thing. This is desaturated, this is saturated, right? So I'm just gonna do a little um, test paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick like maybe a green. Let's just, yeah, let's just do like a really lush green in the front, right? It's obviously not gonna be very clean and well drawn or anything. And then you know it gets a little bit lighter in the middle because you're further away. And you can you can even check this out um, with photographs because um, well obviously this is actually how how it works in real life. So you can go and look at photographs and study them and and see how color behaves and all this. And the further away it gets, the the lighter and the colder it gets. Right. So I'm going to add a little bit of bluish hue like here for the far away ones. Um, generally, you will also notice oops, that the horizon is generally close to white, it's very, very pale blue, extremely pale, and then it gets really much more saturated towards the top, so I'm going to add some saturation here. So maybe, maybe we can, oh wait, that's the largest. Okay. It doesn't look great right now, but you get the idea, right? So, um, I'm just going to add some, some white here. It's kind of difficult to keep it clean. <laughs> okay, so, so 
roughly, very, very roughly, obviously, um, since we don't have that much time. And um, oops, there we go. Um, yeah, you get the idea. So everything that's close is saturated. The further away it gets, the less saturated it is. Um, if you've been here earlier when Lulu was showing her paintings, you did see in the in the painting of the girl between these. Um, I'm not really sure what that was, but like the, the sides, right, the walls. And you saw that if you looked along the walls, it got lighter and lighter towards the end and towards the back, and the color sort of fades. And um, so yeah, and. And you, you saw like everything that was close was really black and strong in colour and everything further away just gets kind of lighter. Actually, I think the thing is still open. Oh, this one? Yeah. Oh, but you can see it here too, I think. So you can you can see wow. here, it gets light, right? And this, this area is really bright colours, strong colours. And this is really faded over here. Which one was the other one? It's not this. <laughs> feel free to ask me anytime. It's okay to interrupt me as well, by the way, so you just um, don't feel shy. All right, then I might want to talk a little bit about, um, let me see if I can just make a new layer. I'd like to talk about uh, backgrounds on a comic page. Um, oops. A lot of people um, are really unsure about how much background they want to add into like a page or where to add it. So um, uh, the key to that is just balance. Balance your work. It's all about balance. Um, obviously easier said than done. Um, the thing is, you want to um, lead the viewer's eye across a page. Actually, maybe I should not start with a page because that's already a bit advanced. Okay, um, I'm just going to go back to this actually. Um, oh god, I'm used to having a mouse here. So <laughs> keep doing this. Um, okay, let me just zoom in. Whoops, not too far. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, this, okay. Lead the eye of the viewer. Right? So there's a couple of things that, um, oops, zoom out, yeah. Okay, there's a couple of things that sort of direct the eye of the viewer. And one of them is a person, actually. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer again. Oh well, I'll just merge these. Um, so yeah, like a person. For some reason, since we're all human beings, we automatically recognize each other. So people are things that within a picture, within a drawing or an illustration that pulls our eye towards them because they're like us. Um, so people. Then we've got, um, so, so when somebody looks at this drawing, instead of looking at the landscape first, we will always look at the person and then the landscape. And it's usually just a split second, but it happens. So um, everything focuses towards the person first. Then another thing that we also do is if there's any sort of lines pointing, we follow those with the eyes. So in this case, I'm just going to add like a river or something. It's really kitschy, but whatever, right? Um, so what will happen, I'm just going to draw this on a different layer. What will happen is, the person looks, so it starts out here, first thing where they look, and then they will follow the path. That's how the eye is going to go, right? And sometimes, this is why composition is really, really important, because sometimes when, when these things are not balanced, you can have it happen that stuff just distracts oops, the viewer. So, for example, if you didn't place, whoops, you did not place the river there, um, and you let's say had you had a river going this way, 
right? What will happen is the viewer will actually look from here and off the page. And if you have a comic, for example, that has a Western uh, reading direction, this is really bad because you're looking the wrong way. You're supposed to have the viewer follow the page to the next panel, right? So this is really bad. So there's a couple of things you can do to prevent this. Um, and I'm not really sure on the professional terms here because um, I'm also quite self-taught. <laughs> and I had a mentor who explained this to me. So I just call them like blockers. So what you can do is you can place blockers. And I've already shown you how um, very things very close up like leaves or twigs are really detailed. So what you can do is you can place uh, an object really, really close to the front. So let's just say I'm going to add um, like a, a branch with like leaves. And you can just go and um, let's just say I'm just going to do like a really blobby big thing. So I'm just going to place like a bush right here. And it has like a couple of leaves coming out. And there we go. Right? Let's just pretend this is really detailed as well. <laughs> um, no time for all that detailing, right? So this is blocking the eye from just flying off the page. So what this does is kind of, it rearranges this whole thing and it will be blocked off and then you just sort of, the eye just goes back. It's like, oh, and sort of goes this. Now though, we've got a bit of a, it's a bit unbalanced. Now you've got like this huge blob here, person sort of in the middle, but it doesn't feel right yet, right? So I like to just balance it out and put another blocker on the other side so that the person doesn't go like this. Um, you sort of want people to rest in a scene sometimes. In this case, we've got beautiful landscape and it looks like an opener to like a scene. Somebody's, you know, um, uh, just wandering or adventuring and you want them to sort of enjoy the view for just a few milliseconds longer than when you want to read the next panel. So you can just place another blocker on the other side. Maybe not that strongly, so just maybe just a couple of twigs here. And then you have a connecting factor, so you've got a balance, but they're not identical, so it's not boring, right? Like, asymmetry is kind of good, because it's, it's dynamic, um, but it's also balanced, and what you achieve is pretty much that the eye kind of does this, right? And um, lingers for a while, so there's that. Oops, I don't know. Perspective, right? So you usually have to work with a grid. Whoops, not a crappy one like that. 
But um, so what you do is you, you have like, oh god, I'm really bad at drawing this freehand. <laughs> um, I'm just going to attempt to copy this. So let's just say there's a street here. Um, I'm just going to do a very basic.
on a whole page. But I will I will talk about like the page composition next. So um, I can explain a couple of other things that help keeping the flow going. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's just um, it's sort of again it's about balancing a whole thing. Um, one thing I find quite useful is that um, you try to treat backgrounds like characters. So it sounds kind of weird, but if you, um, I always hated drawing houses or, you know, things like that. I find it terribly boring. Um, until I met somebody who was really good at drawing these things, and uh, and I asked him like, how do you do this? You know, how can you be so enthusiastic about just you know, boxes and stuff, it's like, for me it's boring, I like drawing people, I like drawing expressions, but how can a house be interesting, right? And he said, well, you have to give it character, like a person. So if you're, if you're designing a fantasy story or something, you can't just draw a simple house, you know, like a tavern is boring, it's just a tavern. <clears throat> but if you add little things around it that make it interesting, then you will find yourself enjoying drawing it more. Like, as I said, it's a tavern, right? Everybody loves fantasy, I hope. <laughs> so if you have like a tavern, you can add, you know, barrels of ale outside. You can add a cat walking outside. And it's not really part of the house, but it gives an overall image. You could also add uh, just spider webs on one corner because, I don't know, they never clean that corner. Or you can put a broom in the other corner. So you know that people are living there, they are using things there, they're putting items there, right? You can put cracks in the wall, so you know the house is old. You can put, I don't know, just somebody littered there, so there's like somebody just threw something in the corner, or the door is a little bit open, or, you know, there's so many things you can add, and it is character, right? So, um, and another thing is, um, you also don't have to be worried about everything being perfect because um, often people just want to use like a ruler and make it perfect and the angle has to be perfect and like you saw I just scribbled this and it's not perfect but it works right and as long as it looks correct it's okay so um, as I said this, this tavern for example would look a lot nicer if you freehand draw it as well um, than if you just strictly keep to all of the guidelines. It's probably a good idea to have the guidelines first and then sort of do the roughs, but then sort of take away the guidelines and finish it up a bit more organically. <laughs> Hello? Oh, it went off. I think my microphone's off. <laughs> I'll just have to talk louder now. <laughs> Western? Who's for Western? 
They want to rest. Okay, we'll do Japanese then, right? Okay? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll go with the Japanese person. Um, I'm just going to draw like a, an example page. Fills in 
the sound of the wind carrying these leaves, right? And so even though you don't see the wind here, you feel like you, you see it here, right? So you kind of add the little bits of the senses in the comic, right? And making it pop out just seems a lot more three-dimensional. So you could also like put a leaf here coming out so it feels more like, you know, the scene is lived in and um, organic and alive. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's gone again. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I think I think I can manage. I've got water now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> um, yeah, they only changed the the thing once, but um, I'm not, I don't know what's going on. I'll just take another. So that's where it comes back. It's kind of more here. It goes straight here, right? And then again, it's text, text, face, face, and then here's a path. And so the overall, <laughs> the overall flow of this page is this, and that's the result. Right? Okay. So these are the things. Oh wait, I forgot to write down. Uh, ooh. All right, I'm just changing. Half lines perspective. Um. Yeah. So I'm just gonna blend these up, these out for a bit. Just not show them for a bit. And go back to. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Close up shot, so I'll just write it down close. 
Shall I draw, oh, shall I draw a cute kitty cat or something? <laughs> Anybody requests? <laughs> let me just, um, okay, let me just maybe, yeah, I'm just going to merge these as well. So we've got, oops, oh yeah, we'll, we'll just put these together. And these are going to stay invisible. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'll just turn these off. Okay. Well, I don't know. Does, uh, does really nobody have questions? Because then I'll just doodle. <laughs> yes? I would like to ask, ask you to uh, how much years you have done this. How or, many years? Or when you started with this. You know. Well, um, I, well, I'm half Japanese, so when I was very, very, very little, I did draw only manga all the time. But I've been doing this professionally since 2004, so like a long time. <laughs> and um, I already said this last year, because I was here last year too and I shocked everybody. But if you haven't been here last year, I'm also much older than I look. <laughs> so yes, I have been doing it for a while. <laughs> it's just always, um, yeah, people think that I'm very young and like, oh, you know, how can she be doing this for so long? But I'm actually over 30. So, um, I've been doing this for a good decade or so. And professionally, like, I'm, uh, in Germany I'm actually published multiple times, and recently I also published um, a comic, uh, comic, like, actually Western comic in Australia. So, you know, a lot of work to do and stuff. <laughs> Can I yes. ask a question? Do you, sp do you still play on bass? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not very often, but I try. <laughs> Um, I recently got a new um, a new system of a down song, so I've been oh. practicing. <laughs> well, can I ask one more off-topic question? Like, yes. Uh, what What are you doing uh, when you are having an outdoor block? Art block? Yeah. Um, uh, art well, blocks. You, well, you know, because I'm also artist, but not, you know, but I'm. Uh, having quite often outdoor block, and I won't ask. Uh, for some su su suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, art block is always a big problem for a lot of people. So um, it's really difficult. I don't get art block very much because um, I've got a lot of self discipline because freelancing as an artist is very tough. Yes. So for me, it was always like, uh, I can't draw, but I'm really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I want to draw. I don't want to, but I have to draw because otherwise, you know, oh, electricity is really nice. <laughs> so, so, you know, you have to do it. So um, I trained myself to always just, you know, oh, shut up, just work, work. And so um, it's a matter of, um, it's, I think discipline is something you can train. And um, a lot of people, I think, have trouble with this because it's a hobby. It's, you have the choice. And then if you just don't feel the motivation, uh, you know, it's like uh, motivation has to come to you, but yeah. discipline is something you impose on yourself. So it's something you have much more control over. And, but um, I do still get art block sometimes, and I now am comfortable enough to sometimes take a break. So what I do is I stop drawing. And I stop drawing for a week. And I go outside, which I don't do very much, so I go outside. <laughs> I go for walks, I go bicycling, I go swimming, I go meet friends, I go to cafes. <laughs> I, uh, if I can, I go to events or something. It's anything so. to distract. <coughs> and then eventually, especially like listening to music and things, and eventually I really, really want to draw again. And so it just naturally comes back to me. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I hope it helps because yeah, it's very well, tough. Uh, well, maybe I ask you later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, another thing I find um, is uh, knowing what inspires you is yeah. also something that um, not everybody can find out very easily. But for myself, I know that, for example, other artists inspire me a lot. So I just look through DeviantArt or Pixiv, and then I see amazing things. And some people feel discouraged when they see that, but I just, I just feel like, I want to be like them. I want to do this. Oh my god, they tried this. I want to try that. And then I try it out. And um, the big thing is you try not to um, compare yourself in terms of quality and being a better, better or worse person. So people often see that and it's like, oh, I'm not that good. But the thing is, you're not them. So you'll never be them, so forget comparing. Don't even start, because it's always unhealthy. You, you, don't, you don't have a mentality of their... Yeah, yeah. You can copy that. Yeah. Be They're like, 
colleagues and you can learn from them. You can learn from every artist that you just look at and analyze. So see it as an opportunity instead of um, something that hinders you, you know? So just just stay positive. So the, the positive mindset is very important. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> yes, there's another question. Have you ever worried that uh, you're not uh, original enough? Yes. <laughs> I think every artist struggles with this because um, well, I'm on DeviantArt as well and you sometimes get comments where people go, oh, this reminds me of, mm, you know, oh, that reminds me of, mm. and you didn't even think, you've never heard of that series before, you've never heard of that character before, but you're like, what do you mean? But well, no, I, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I, I made it myself. I am original. I really am. <laughs> And you just constantly have to remind yourself that everything on the face of the planet has been done before. There's, there's no such thing as originality if you come down to it. But um, the unique thing is you as a person only exist once. And so your interpretation of something will always be unique. Even if it's a copy, even if you're inspired, it will always be your unique version of something. So, um, you just have to eventually stop worrying. Somebody's always going to compare, but you have to stop comparing yourself. And you have to stop changing things to please others as well. There's a level of, you know, pleasing people that you can do, but you shouldn't lose your own identity. Yeah? You mentioned using SketchUp. Um, yeah. Uh, a lot of people can get access to Photoshop, maybe. Um, uh, the, the new 3D tools and more recent versions of Photoshop which allow you to po pull in assets and there are a lot of places you get uh, 3D assets uh, oh, okay. from GrabCAD and stuff. Do you, do you use these to get assets thrown into a scene there and, and um, put perspective on them or basic something to work from? Yeah, I've, um, I, I usually do like a combination of various things because um, uh, like SketchUp has like this warehouse thing as well. So sometimes I do that to study an item through it thoroughly because like tracing is always horribly wrong to me. Like whatever you do, tracing is always wrong. So I try to study an item, especially if I can't build it. For example, one of my last book was a, um, a story about a punk rock band. And so I had to draw guitars, which is incredibly difficult to do like freehand. So I did loads of uh, you know research. I, I did take photographs of friends who like friends had a base or something. So I took billions of photographs and then I combined them. So I had yeah. But sometimes I do, especially for um, things that don't go into the book in the end. So for practice, I did try and for example just trace over some of the things to see what it feels like. This is the right shape. Okay, now try freehand things like that. Um, there's, a, there's another tool that I use, um, Lightwave, and it has some, it's a 3D tool, mm -hmm. and it has some non-photorealistic rendering options, oh, right. and mm -hmm. you can choose like uh, the line type and stuff, and then you can just <coughs> rotate the object, it does the lines. Wow, that's really great. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not really um, that good at building these things myself, so for me, these are just crutches of getting it done quickly as well. Um, so, but yeah, if you, if you actually know how to make these things, that's like brilliant. <laughs> it's like the best option in my opinion. So if you do have these tools, obviously I recommend everybody to use them. Um, I want, um, I know uh, a German artist who once claimed that um, people who are not perfect, like the only people who use references and crutches are like not professional. And I cannot, like this, it's so much wrong with this statement. It's, if you look at all the professionals, they have to be fast. They have to crank out page after page after page within a week. And you just do not have the time, especially we do not have the resources to pay someone like to be drawing for us. So yeah, you just take whatever you can to make good work without you know infringing anybody's copyrights. So yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, we've got two minutes over time now. But if uh, if anybody has questions, I'm still here for like two minutes before we head off back to the artist alley. Um, so thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you learned something. Thanks for listening.